This is what I get asked a lot. How did you start world travel by yourself? So I'm gonna go into it and please feel free to ask me any questions, especially if you're considering it and see if I can help you. So I know a lot of people do it in a couple, but the thing that really spurred me on was uh, being freshly divorced and being single. So now before this, when I was married, we went on some very fancy trips. Um, both my partner and I had a photography business together. Then we were doing it solo because um, it doubled our income and I was tired of turning down photography jobs to do them together. So we each had our own income in photography and we went on some very extravagant, luxurious trips, Bora Bora, Hawaii. Um, so that got me started on having trips, but I thought that was the only way you could do them. So once I was solo and there was a dot-com crash, <laughs> this is what really got me on the Asia roller coaster ride of discovering countries and having it cost a lot less than the United States and going to these luxury resorts. So what happened was the uh, first very big one, my son asked me to come to Nepal and visit him. He was volunteer teaching, and I said yes. Now, this was the first time I'd ever taken two and a half months off since being a preteen. Because <laughs> as soon as I was a teenager, I'd get jobs in the summer. So I hadn't had two and a half months off in decades. And because of doing wedding photography, I was always booked up and that ran my life for over 20 years. So you, we couldn't be gone a long time because of these uh, wedding commitments. So this was brand new territory for me. And to go to Asia was a totally different experience that was brand new as well because I'd never been to Asia, had no interest in it. I wouldn't have gone if my son wasn't there. So this trip really opened my eyes to a lot of things. One, volunteering. Two, the cost of travel in Asia being much cheaper than any trip I'd ever done. Learning a lot from my son about how to travel with a budget and still have an amazing time. That's something I didn't know because I was used to spending 200 and up for a hotel room, and this was in the 1990s, so it would be five times as much now. So the thing was, I uh, went to Nepal, India, and Bali by myself. I was in Nepal leading a volunteer project, which was teaching photography to the faculty of the Nepal Youth Foundation. Thank you, Olga Murray. So she runs, she founded that biz, that nonprofit. It's the biggest one in Nepal. And I thought, hey, I'm going to do some volunteering when I go there too, because I was there for three weeks. And it turned out to really change my life about doing volunteer projects, enjoying them in different countries, and learning a lot from it. I taught photography, but never to, never in Asia. So this was an eye-opening experience. So then we, both my son and I went to India together, got to see the Dalai Lama in Dharmasala. We went to Rishikesh. I stayed in my first ashram with him and it was really fun. <laughs> so I couldn't believe how cheap everything was. And so it started to open my mind. Then he went to do some traveling on his own and I went to Bali by myself. Wow, what a mind blower that was. It was the first country that was very different culturally than the ones I had been to. I still hadn't been to Europe at that point, but it really opened my eyes about housing, transportation, ways to get around. Um, at that time, I didn't rent a motorbike, but the next time I went back to Bali, I had the person 
meet me at the airport with the motorbike and my luggage so I could just go directly from the airport. So it's important to have a motorbike on Bali. It just changed my mind completely about travel. And so when I got back from that two and a half month trip in Nepal, India and Bali, I arrived back in the center of Palo Alto, which is the heart of Silicon Valley with a completely different attitude and I couldn't wait to leave again. So my next trip was six months in South America by myself. And after that trip, it just took off. I didn't want to have a normal life anymore. And so I have been investigating different ways to live and I've lived in ashrams, rented houses all to myself, rented apartments all to myself, rooms in a house where I just rent the room. I've lived in <laughs> so many different <laughs> places, communities, solo, with a group. I learned a lot about living by doing all of these different permutations of housing. Oh, some of the best ones were living in a nunnery, living in a monastery, and and not knowing the language, not knowing Nepali, not knowing Thai, not knowing Hindi, and just having to cope. But it taught me a lot about different cultures. So I wanted to share this with you because I started when I was age, what, 49? Yeah, because I turned 50 on the South America trip in Brazil. And I decided I'm going to keep going with this. So the very next year, I went back to India and I was in India. And I'd been renting out my apartment and... I had decided there was some problems with the rental, something happened, and I just said, I'm just gonna go back, sell everything and keep going. I don't even wanna have a place to come back to. So that was in 2009. I came back, sold 95% of my, 98%, because I just have a five by 10 storage container, uh, not container, unit, where I keep mostly my archive of photography, negative slides and some family mementos and things I just can't let go of yet, but I keep going through it <laughs> and saying, I don't need that, I can sell this. Um, so I wanna encourage you just because it's not easy, but if you want to do a life where it's different than what other people are doing, but you don't have encouragement, I wanna, encourage you to do it because their life isn't easy either. Nobody's life is easy. Um, so what you have to do is decide what you want to do, what makes you happy. And the thing that really changed my mind was being in these other countries and having a fantastic time and spending a lot less than I did working at home in the heart of Silicon Valley. <laughs> I mean, the costs are so high. And I was making a good income. However, I was exploring on these different continents and discovering things I'd never seen before, meeting people I never would have met in my hometown. So it just changed my life, and I wanted to keep doing it. So this was when people weren't doing it. And not doing it solo. So back in 2009, I didn't know anybody else that was a solo woman that was doing it. And a lot of people said I was crazy, but I didn't listen. So here's the thing. If you are finding value in this and being encouraged to do it yourself, you can do it. Don't let anybody stop you. If you feel like you don't want to live in the United States anymore, you can just travel full time and have it not even cost as much as what you pay living in the United States, which is what's happened to me. Every time I go somewhere, it costs less, even in Europe, than what I pay here. So if you have liked this, 
please like, share, subscribe for more travel and lifestyle information. And I'm also happy to help you. I do consultations and want to see you live your best life. So I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you in the next video.